You are an investor in this stock. Give us a sense if you're long or if you're short, and what do you need to see in this report to keep you invested in Constellation Brands? Yeah, so we're, we're long the stock. Uh, we're generally long investors overall. Uh, you know, a couple of things that I, I like about it. First, we'll just talk about the space. I mean, you were just highlighting the fact that we obviously see some increased market volatility here in an environment like that. It's kind of nice to be in names that have a lower beta. Constellation fits the bill on that score. It has a beta of about 0.8 relative to the S&P. Uh, you know, something else to like about it, it's trading at a slight discount to the market, probably about 19 and a half times earnings, which is a discount both to its own peers in the U.S., I should point out, not uh, internationally necessarily, and a discount to the S&P itself. And, you know, I think you want to be in uh, non-cyclical businesses in an environment like this. A company has decent free cash flow. Obviously, you've highlighted some of the growth they've seen. I think that growth is probably not going to be quite as sustainable in the long term. They had, as you were pointing out, uh, the benefit of uh, that boycott. They, they took over a lot of the market share that AB InBev lost in the Bud Light sales. And I think that that probably has run its course, if we will say that. I don't think that Bud Light's going to regain their market share necessarily, but I think that probably most of the damage that will okay. be done has been done. All right, so I also want to talk to you just about this current rate environment and also the stretch consumer. Are you concerned that the stretch consumer could hurt sales going forward? Q4 generally is the best quarter when it comes to alcohol and beer sales. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, it's, it, we're obviously in, right in the football season. That's obviously a big thing to watch. I think that's going to be an important part of it. Uh, I have a feeling that this is probably one of the things that consumers are not necessarily going to cut back on. I mean, there are, there are other places that they're getting pinched, uh, but I don't necessarily think that things like Modelo, which is now the, the leading beer sales in the, in the country, is necessarily going to see big pullbacks. This, is, this isn't a luxury item. All right, uh, Mike, I also want to play some sound from the Molson Core CEO. You mentioned some of the peers in the beer space. The Molson Core CEO on Mad Money last night with Jim Cramer, and he talked about his company moving beyond beer. Take a listen. We're moving beyond beer. We're moving into non alc products, whether those are energy drinks, whether they're non-alcoholic beers. In fact, one of our bigger innovations, which I think is going to be a big deal for us, is the launch of of Blue Moon Non-Elk, which we're bringing um, in uh, December, just in time for, for dry January. And I think that's going to play right into that space. Into that, uh, space. All right. So that was the Molson Core CEO talking about their company offering some non-alcoholic offerings. Um, Sir Constellation Brands, you know, just very, does, doesn't have many non-alcoholic offerings, if at all. They do have a, a wine portfolio. Are you worried about a lack of diversification and just the company leaning too much on its beer offer? You know, I think that's a really good point that you're making, because one of the things that we have seen is that I think that there is basically uh, more flexibility in what consumers are going for in the beverage space. And, you know, so that brand loyalty thing, I think the Bud Light issue highlighted the fact that maybe it isn't as secure as some people thought. And then, of course, we've seen uh, a lot of innovative beverage products coming out in the alcohol space. But I, I think this is, you know, sort of the core constituency that they have. And, you know, we really should think of them as a U.S. brewer. They're much smaller than AB InBev. It's 80 percent uh, of their revenues is uh, basically U.S. beer sales. And so I think we really sort of have to highlight and focus on that because everything else that they're into, including even things like cannabis, which uh, they have a big shared canopy, uh, you know, those are really opportunities. And really, we're going to be focusing most of our attention on how their core beer brands are doing. Well, Mike, you led me to my last question. Um, we're going to take a look at canopy shares right now. The, uh, the entire cannabis sector under a lot of pressure this year. We're taking a look. Shares down 66 percent year to date. Are you concerned about the uh, canopy investment in that part of this company's portfolio and the fact that it really moves on retail trading and sentiment and just the hope of legalization? Yeah, really? I, I, not at all, because this actually only represents an opportunity for this company. The, uh, the revenues that they get from this area are less than 4% of their total revenues, and that's actually less than half of the incremental increase in their beer revenues year on year for the uh, 12 months ending in February of this year. So this simply represents an opportunity. I mean, if that, even if it went to zero, it's, it's pretty much a rounding error for them.